<laughs> Amal, a Syrian refugee, feels devastated. Her daughter, Sahar, is to be separated from her family in Denmark and sent back to Damascus, where she doesn't know anyone. A young girl cannot live alone in Damascus. It's impossible. There are rapes and kidnappings. It's not safe at all. She just can't go there alone. The Al Rifai family has been living in Abenra, southern Denmark, for six years now. They found safety here from the civil war in Syria. When I came to Denmark, I wanted to start a new life with my family here. We came to this town and I was happy. I thought I could stay here forever. Until one day, a letter from the immigration office arrived, saying her residence permit has been revoked. Sahar appealed. Refugee Appeals Board, decision on March 25, 2022, on a complaint by Syrian citizen Sahar Mahmoud El Rifai. They say I was rejected. My residence permit won't be renewed. My mother and younger brother can stay. I'm the only one being expelled. Twenty-one-year-old Sahar attends the Abenra Secondary School. She's a good student and has been studying hard for her exams. So, hi, hi, I'm Mangavina, hi, I have lots of friends here. Hi, hi, I, um, I'm learning languages, and I've got a dream. Hi, I want to be an engineer. My school is actually my second home. Once the Danish government declared her home city, Damascus, a safe area, everything changed. Sahar is one of 400 Syrians being told to leave Denmark. The immigration office did not grant us an interview. Migration experts suspect a policy of deterrence. The Syrian refugees having their residence permits withdrawn is part of branding Denmark as a more restrictive country when it comes to asylum and immigration policy. Although. Denmark doesn't actually have a return agreement with Syria, meaning that we would draw residence permits, but there is no way of forcibly returning Syrian refugees to Syria. And so Sahar could be facing confinement in a deportation camp in Denmark, like this one in Elebek. 21-year-old Syrian Rahima Abdullah is an activist and a youth representative on the Danish Refugee Council. She's familiar with cases like Sahar's and wants to help. It started at school, where I had a friend called Aya. One day she came to me and said she was very scared because her residence permit had not been extended, because Denmark had declared Damascus safe for a turn. So we went to the media. That was our only chance. You can't tell someone who's integrated here that she has to go back to Damascus. The city's not safe. In Aya's case, the public effort finally met with success last year. She got permission to stay. Since that time, as many as five Syrians contact Rahima per day, most of them women. Young men are not expelled because they face conscription in Bashir Assad's armed forces. Sometimes I can't sleep at night because I see such terrible cases and I take them to heart. When I posted Sahar's case on Facebook, a parliamentarian contacted me who wanted to write about it. He might be able to help. Sahar's memories of her own country are mainly of war. When I was in Syria, there were battles and bombs. Here I feel much safer. I have my family here. And this is where I grew up. I'm a part of Danish society. But now it appears that counts for very little in the eyes of Danish law.